There he is. Oh, you're sideways. Can you turn? Oh. Oh, I go like that. Hi. <laughs> sideways is fun, too, though. <laughs> I was feeling a little dizzy, you know? <laughs> All right. This is Mark Wise. Um, you know, last night I misspoke when I said I hadn't heard of you. What I meant is I hadn't heard of you being from Matawan. I thought of that after I hung up with you. You're probably thinking, like, how did you? I don't, I don't remember you saying that. So funny. I, right before we left, I was like, I've never heard of you. I meant being from Matawan. So Mark and I are both raised in Matawan, New Jersey. You never hear that, except for, like, a Jaws reference every once in a while. Well, well, well actually, Aberdeen now, isn't it? Aberdeen, that's right. They changed it on us. I think I was in sixth grade at Lloyd Road when they changed the part of our town from Matawan to Aberdeen. <laughs> yeah, I used I used to be a lifeguard at Cheesequake State Park. I saw that. I started reading. I couldn't put the book down last night. So for everyone, this is Mark Weiss. I am so excited to talk to you. I have heard so much about you. We have mutual friends. Mark is the, well, do you like the term legendary or does that just make you feel old? Legend lay it on, lay it on, you know, whatever legendary. you want to call me photographer to the stars, the biggest big hair band photographer of any band you have ever loved from the 70s, the 80s. Of course, you're still going strong. You look like the epitome of every hot rock star out there. It's like, you, Ow. and you're not even, I mean, you're the photographer, which is probably just as much of a skill, but did you ever want to be a rock star just from being around them? Of course, who didn't want to be a rock star? I mean, I tried it when I was 14, but I have no musical ability. I have no voice. I did try, but I gave it up pretty quick. Oh, uh, I can't, I mean, we can't, we can only touch on some of the stories, but let's start by telling everybody that you are doing this special event to benefit the Monmouth Museum. It's so great that you stay close to your roots and that you still love the Jersey Shore, and I know you support a lot of a lot of stuff around here, but Monmouth Museum is pretty important. And um, with this virtual fundraiser, I was telling everybody before you arrived that there's going to be a, a special cocktail delivered to your door, and then a cocktail hour with you and Gabby Bryan, who we're going to talk to at 11:30 this morning on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so people get to hang out and drink with you a week from today, next Friday. Oh, yeah. Coolest thing ever, right? And it's for a great cause, Monmouth Museum. I mean, I mean, a lot of people know about it, but a lot of people don't know about it. And it's oh. kind of like, it's easy to get to. It's right off the park, Garden State Parkway, exit 109 by Red Bank. So it's kind of like a cool area. And it's it's huge. It's it's a museum. I mean, how many museums are in New Jersey? I mean, this is a really cool place. And I'm, I'm honored to be part of the Monmouth Museum and, and try to raise some, some money for, you know, these times where it's kind of hard to keep businesses going. So, you know, uh, right, actually right now we have a, an auction on Charity Buzz where you go on charitybuzz.com and I have some of my signed photos from Ozzy Osbourne. And, and these are photos that I had signed like seven, eight years ago and I was waiting for the right time to try to raise some funds. So we're trying to raise some funds to, to make this, um, this my gallery and other, other things in the future really run really like, you know, without a flaw. So charitybuzz.com, there's about 10 different auctions, some photos of Bruce Springsteen, Ozzy Osbourne, a lot of cool stuff. Um, you have photographed, well, Bon Jovi, Tom Petty, Queen, The Stones, Motley Crue, Van Halen, Aerosmith, Brett Michaels, Slash, Guns N' Roses. I mean, you can't, everyone who's anyone, it's so exciting. I mean, tell me, I, I read some of your book already. I, first of all, I love to read. This new book that you have, is beyond coffee table. First of all, it must weigh a thousand pounds. And it would take, it's not, you're not reading it in a day. I feel like you gave everyone your entire life's work. That's how many pictures are in this. Backstage pictures, pictures that nobody else would ever have access to or even known about. What is it like from the time you started sneaking into rock concerts and learning how to use a camera to, what it's been like since then. Do you get jaded? Do you still get that level of excitement? Tell us. I totally get that level of excitement. And I'm always looking for new artists uh, that have that look and have the sound. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited. I feel like, uh, you know, like I'm just started out really. I have a little more confidence now that I have a little bit of a track record 
So um, back then when I was shooting, I was always so nervous to like, you know, shooting these people uh, and not because they're big, big famous rock stars, but just because I didn't want to disappoint them. I didn't want to like, you know, what if the film didn't come out? I mean, now you look at your, your camera at the back of it, oh, I got it. But back then, 36 tries to get it on one roll of film and then you have to develop it, make sure everything's right. So a lot of stress. So. I'm kind of liking the process now, believe it or not. Um, and you it's so did have a lot. You did have some trial and error getting home sometimes after concerts and realizing the film didn't come out or the lighting was too dark or whatever. I mean, you you taught yourself in this business too. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's just trial and error. It's not it's not brain surgery. You know, you you take your finger and you push a button, you make the lighting look right, and and you got a shot. I mean, of course, there's more to it. You got to connect with the the subject. Uh, fortunately, I picked a subject that I loved, and uh, and that's how you get successful. You, you go with what you like. Like if you if you like disco and you, you want to start shooting rock bands, it, it's probably not going to work, you know. So I found something that I didn't even find. It was just there on my doorstep, you know. When I was eighteen, sneaking into not sneaking in, but going to uh, like found casino when White Tiger was playing in nineteen eighty. <laughs> You know, and all these bands were playing in the clubs. You had to be 18 to go to the clubs when I was, you know, in 1977, 78, when I was just out of high school. So it was fun going there and all the bands were playing like Led Zeppelin covers and ACDC and then Twisted Sister came and, and then it started to be a little more national and original. So it was just a progression of me just being a kid in high school, sneaking out of concerts, uh, Madison Square Garden, and, and then taking it, just finding my own way, really. And it was pretty, I don't want to say it was easy, but it kind of was. It's kind of cool though, reading about when you get the book, uh, it, which is called The Decade That Rocked, by the way, and it's out now. You hear the stories about how, ever, who hasn't gone to a concert and had nosebleed seats and envied the people that had enough balls to get themselves down to the front of the concert hall. I mean, you really have to, you gotta have a lot of well, bravery to not get kicked out and chance that but you did it yeah it only took like like i didn't know the concept of photography back then like i just started shooting black and white and peter frampton was playing in 1976 and i st i stuck my camera in and i and i got a really cheap uh blue seat which is we call blue heaven and i was up there and i just thought that you know, all right there's peter down there i can barely see him but if i take a picture and then i blow it up really big in the dark room it'll be just as good but that's how I learned my first lesson. I got it and it's like, I couldn't even tell. It was like a piece of grain. Yeah. Then the next concert was Aerosmith. Uh, and then I got, then I said, I gotta get down there. And I snuck in, uh, like when the lights went out after the first band would go on, uh, go off, uh, I would jump over the barricade and, and, and kind of make my way into the first 15, 20 rows. So then I did that and, I, and then I still, I said, all right, these are okay. And, but I still need to get closer. And then I got closer and then I came up with a system where I used to like do that, sneak in there, rip the seats apart from each other where they were coupled and then close it off so the security guards wouldn't be able to get me. And then I had my own spot for the whole show. So um, I had a whole system down. That's, that's amazing. Talk about a creative way to not get caught.